Good job. President, please be seated. The chamber is now back in session, and I would like to give the floor to the lead co-lawyer for civil party to continue putting questions to the civil party. And I would like to uh, remind that the lead co-lawyer for civil party and the co-prosecution, you have combined time of one session to put question to the civil party. Civil party lead co-lawyer. Thank you, Mr. President. I have only one question to put to the civil party, and then I will give the floor to the co-prosecution. Good morning, Mr. Samon. I have one last question related to my earlier questions that I put to you before the break time. I would like you to clarify the aspect related to the purge of the other East Zone soldiers, for example, about the killing of the East Zone soldiers. You have said about there were two groups uh, before your group who were taken away and killed. So could you please provide us the details about that? I answer. I did not witness the incident by my by myself. I only heard that soldiers were called for a study session, and I heard that some of them were killed and dumped into the river at Nhat Lương. And this based on accounts that I heard from other people. So uh, the, the, the killing did happen. My apologies since I had problem with my earphone. Uh, could you please repeat your answer regarding what happened? Answer. I heard that the commanders were called to study sessions and and they were killed and thrown, thrown into the river. I heard that their hands were tied up and they were pushed into the river. So that was based on the accounts that I heard from other people. It was those people who witnessed the incidents they told me about the, the incidents. Lawyers, thank you for your detailed answers. And Mr. President, I would like to hand over the floor to the co-prosecution. President, thank you. Now the floor is given to the co-prosecution. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, Your Honours. Good afternoon, Council. And, uh, Good afternoon, Civil Party. Um, you've told the court you were born in, 19, in 1957. So in 1975, you would have been around 18 years old. Is that correct?
Yes, I was born in 1957. And how did you feel about being asked to join uh, the Khmer Rouge and be involved in combat with Vietnam? How did you feel about that when you were first asked in 1975? At that time, I had confidence in the Khmer Rouge Revolutionary Army because I thought that they were faithful to the Cambodian people. And that's why I joined the army and I served the army with my heart. Thank you. Uh, and you said that you joined uh, the messenger unit in, 19, in 1975, and then in 1976, you became a soldier in Sector 23, Regiment 112. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. I joined Sector 23, Regiment 112. And whilst you were working for this uh, intelligence unit, um, perhaps it was a spy unit, intelligence unit, um, checking on the positions of the, of the Vietnamese um, army at the border, what were, you, what were you told to do by your commanders in relation to um, fighting the Vietnamese troops? Were you told to fight them in combat? Were they your orders? Yes, at that time, when I worked in the special unit, I was sent to gather intelligence information from the Vietnamese soldiers. And sometimes we uh, conducted our spying work within the military barracks. Because the superiors ordered us to uh, prepare our force to attack Vietnamese soldiers. So our intelligent work uh, took place both with the uh, Vietnamese soldiers and uh, within the, army, the military barracks. So where, wherever there were Vietnamese uh, soldiers stationed, we were sent there to gather intelligence information. And you also said that you, you planted mines, is that correct? You, you planted mines at different places along the border. Um, When the situation was not tense, our commanders ordered the special unit to plant mines along the border. So we planted the mines not in front of the soldier, the, the enemies, but we planted the mines at the line behind the enemy. And what was the purpose of planting the mines? Was the purpose to kill the enemy, the Vietnamese troops? Yes, the purpose was to kill the Vietnamese soldiers and to reduce the number of the Vietnamese soldiers. That was the order from our superior. And from the intelligence that you gathered, gathered from um, the Vietnamese troops or, or seeing where the Vietnamese troops were, what were your commanders doing with that intelligence? Were they using it 
to assist in their fighting of the Vietnamese? In fighting with the Vietnamese, the Khmer Rouge commanders thought or focused on fighting against the Vietnamese soldiers, and it was in the same way the Vietnamese commanders also thought or focused their work on fighting against the Khmer Rouge soldiers. And just so we're clear, when did you stop? Uh, gathering intelligence, when did you stop being in combat uh, with the Vietnamese? You said in 1976 um, and 1977 uh, the situation with the Vietnamese uh, was very tense uh, and there was lots of fighting on the border. So the question I have to ask you is when did you stop fighting gathering intelligence, laying the mines. When did you stop doing that against the Vietnamese? I stopped in 1978 when Khmer Rouge soldiers or DK soldiers took us to be killed and then I escaped to Vietnam. So that was the time when I stopped engaging in the activities you mentioned. I escaped to Vietnam in 1978. And I joined the army there and we fought back into Cambodia. So to be clear, you were still fighting Vietnamese forces uh, using your intelligence activities uh, laying of mines, etc., uh, into 1978. Wow. Yes. Yes, it was until 1978. And in that year, I was arrested by the Khmer Rouge soldiers and taken to be killed, but I, could, I managed to flee to Vietnam. And I joined the army in Vietnam and came back to fight against the Khmer Rouge soldiers in the country. Um, but at the same time, whilst you're fighting uh, the Vietnamese in 1978, uh, you've also testified that purges of East Zone soldiers and officials, those purges had started in 1977 against commanders. Is that correct? Wow. No. In 1977, the senior cadres were called to study session and they disappeared one after another. And how did you know this was happening, that the commanders uh, were disappearing from the east zone? Were you told that, or did you see people being taken away to study study sessions? How did you know back then? I heard from other soldiers and villagers who witnessed the incident that the commanders were were pointed with guns and their and they were con their weapons were confiscated and they were boarded onto the military tracks. And those who witnessed the incident felt suspicious. Why uh, they were? Uh, why they did this to uh, their fellow soldiers? 
So they witnessed how the commanders were confiscated their guns and put onto the military tracks. And some time after the, the commanders were taken away, uh, you said that um, uh, your weapons were taken away from you and your unit. Is that correct? Wow. Yes, that is correct. After commanders were called or sent away, soldiers in our unit had no uh, leaders. So we were called to a meeting where we were, where our weapons were confiscated. It took place in Obstrai village of Romihai district. And just to be clear, at the time that they took away your weapons, did they tell you why they were doing it? Wow. When they confiscated weapons from our soldiers, they told us that we would be integrated into Division 7, 703 and we would be sent to study and after the training session completed, we would be given new weapons. So that was their uh, propaganda. Now, I would just like to understand your evidence correctly. Um, when, you, when you testified, you said that um, your unit's weapons were taken away and then at some point after that, you said that some commanders were telling you that after the purge was completed, that you could reintegrate back into the army. Is that correct? Were you told that um, a purge was being conducted by other Khmer Rouge forces? Yes, when the incident took place, they told us that we need to disband and uh, we could go and uh, join our and join our family because they needed to uh, sweep clean the uh, bad elements. But in contrast, in, con in contradictory uh, to what they said, they disbanded us, and soon after that, they tied they tie us up and taken us to be killed. And once uh, you were sent back uh, to your village uh, to register, about how many days or weeks or months uh, went by before you were taken to be killed? once you were registered in the village? I spent uh, two nights, three days at the village, and then we were gathered up to have our names registered at their unit. And after names were recorded, and then we were taken away and killed that night. Now you mentioned that uh, there were 29 um, other people in your group that were disarmed and, and taken away to be killed. How, how do you remember that it was 29? That's a very specific figure.
because during the arrest, uh, we counted the number of our fellow soldiers. And during the registration of names, uh, they registered two people at a time, two people at a time. And during the registration, they already have our hand tied up. And we could count the numbers of our fellow soldiers. And as night time fell, they took us out to be killed. How many of the 29 people were killed that day? Those who were still tied and could not escape or died, and except three of us who uh, survived. When we returned back to Cambodia, we asked about the fate of those who were, were there, and we were told that all had been killed. And in fact, uh, they all thought that we all died, but uh, there were three of us who uh, survived. <coughs> As for the rest who were there, had been shot to death. And you said um, that in the group you were the only one that protested um, against what was happening. Uh, what did um, what did these soldiers that took this your group away to be killed? What did they say that you had done? Wow. When they tied me up, I was shocked and I bashed them that I was simply a ground soldier, a combatant. I did not do anything and I wanted the party to find justice for me. And if there were uh, traitors, there were probably only the uh, commanders. Then there was this soldier who came to beat uh, me with a gun bat and uh, he beat me on my right arm, and uh, from that day, my arm uh, became paralyzed. They accused us of uh, traitors, of enemies, of having human heads on my uh, bodies. Then the, the boss who said that our group, the one who betrayed the party, and the one that had uh, human heads on my bodies, has to be stripped uh, of the clothes and that only the shots remained. We were all naked when we were taken away in a line of fault since we were all tied to a string to be uh, executed. We only had the shots on the, our body and when I uh, fled across to uh, Vietnam, I was only in my uh, shots and I want Mr. President to find me justice for that. And for the easy zone soldiers who were in such a miserable condition and who were treated like animals and executed. We were herded uh, like animal, and only the three of us uh, who could uh, flee, and in fact one of us uh, was also wounded as he was, as he was shot. <coughs> Thank you uh, for that. Um, uh, Mr. Civil Party, I'd, I'd like you to comment on some uh, information we have um, in this case. And it relates to the time when a large number of uh, people from the East Zone were taken to a security centre, an S21. Now, I'll ask you the question. I'll, I'll, I'll read out this information, then I'll ask you a couple of questions. In approximately, in, in a, around 1978, early 1978, there was 1,171 arrested cadre or soldiers, um, regular and local, 
uh, zone, district, sub-district, cooperative chiefs, um, deputies, staff and residents that lived in sec lived and worked in sector 23 in the east zone. And in the prisoner records um, that we have, it records that 1,100... Please uh, hold on, Deputy co prosecutor and Counsel for Keir Sampon, you have the floor. Um. Thank you, Mr. President. I simply would like uh, the co prosecutor to tell us uh, what's, what the sources are behind these figures so that we can follow along. Uh, thank you, Your Honour. It's the OCIJ um, prisoner list. I think it's E393. Uh, point two um, that was uh, admitted in the case on the 16th of March this year. It's the new OCIJ prisoner list. <clears throat> and that, those records from S21, which was a security centre in, in Phnom Penh during the DK period, it records that um, in March 1978, 105 people from the East Zone were brought to S21. In April 1978, it records that 448 people from Sector 23 were brought to S21. In May, before the 24th of May 1978, 458 people from Sector 23 were taken into S21. And then another 16 from the Sector 23 in the East Zone were taken into S21 um, after the 24th of May till the end of May. And then 37 from Sector 23 were brought in in June 78. 60 were brought in in July 78, 10 were brought in in August 78, 5 were brought in in September 78, 6 were brought in in November 78, and 5 were brought in in Dece December 78. So my question is, in the periods of March, April and May in 1978, over a thousand people from Sector 23 uh, were brought in to Phnom Penh to S21 Security Centre. Now my question is, does that information help you or refresh your memory as to when the major purge of Sector 23 occurred? either in 1977 or early in 1978. Mark. In late 77 and early 78, uh, many soldiers were ar arrested, including cadres at the district and the provincial levels, but uh, did not know where they were sent to. And I worked as a soldier at the time, and when I uh, went on my uh, mission around, I saw arrest of uh, those uh, people at the district and at the uh, provincial levels. Here I refer both to the uh, military cadre and to the uh, civilian uh, cadres. Thank you. I'll just have a few more questions and I'll pass, uh, I'll ask my colleague to, to ask um, the remaining few questions. You mentioned that um, when members of your group in the 29 were killed, 
you mentioned in your civil party application that that occurred on the 25th of August 1978. Uh, again, that's a very specific date. So my question to you is, um, how do you remember that those killings occurred on the 25th of August 1978? But uh, I recall the month uh, and year very clearly that is August 1978. However, the day may be incorrect. But I am sure that it happened in August 1978, since that was the time that I fled uh, crossing into uh, Vietnam. So let me repeat again, maybe the date, the day is not correct, but the month and the year is correct. Because I uh, ran for the whole night and by morning I arrived at uh, the border. Thank you. <clears throat> That day, when your colleagues were killed, you mentioned that around that time there was fighting between the southwest zone uh, forces, and the central zone forces, and the eastern zone forces. My my question to you is: For how long had that fighting been going? Uh, before your colleagues were killed, approximately? Was it days, weeks, months? The period of the coup d'etat did not uh, last uh, up to a month. It lasted for about a week. Then we were taken to be uh, executed, and that's when I fled to Vietnam. So I would say uh, the gap between the coup d'etat was about uh, a week or a fortnight at uh, the most. Because uh, by that time I was not in Cambodia since I fled to uh, Vietnam. But the coup d'etat took place in August 1978, although I did not know how long it uh, lasted since I fled to uh, Vietnam. But uh, through my because by that time there were not many East Zone forces since all the uh, commanders had all been uh, removed, so there were no forces to counter the, the forces from the center. And there were only ground uh, soldiers. There were no commanders since the commanders had uh, already been uh, removed. Um. Other witnesses um, that have provided statements to this court, and I refer to uh, E3 slash 1568, E3 slash 390, and E3 slash 387, these witnesses say that um, the resistance or the coup d'etat or the fighting in any event commenced around the 24th, 25th of May. Is that possible? that the, um, the fighting had been continuing for a few months before uh, you and your colleagues, or before your colleagues were killed. Sir Patti, please hold on, and Defence Counsel for Kiev Sampon, you have the floor. I object to the way the question is being put. 
which uh, pushes the civil party to speculate? Um, I, I'm not sure about that. I think it's just giving the civil party an opportunity to comment. Um, it's some evidence in the case that uh, you know, your, your honours will be trying to work out the timeline with this witness, and I think it, it should have an opportunity to be able to comment whether um, the fighting had continued, uh, had commenced about two or three months earlier. It's. Uh, oh, okay. <clears throat> President, the objection is uh, overruled. The question is permissible, and the uh, civil party may respond to that uh, question since he himself was uh, there. And the question is to seek uh, his uh, personal observation from his uh, personal knowledge. Civil party, you may respond to the question put to you last by the deputy co-prosecutor. Answer. Could it uh, took place in August 1978? And uh, not long after our group was arrested for execution, then uh, I fled to uh, Vietnam. I knew that it was in August be because uh, we, our names were registered when we fled to uh, Vietnam. And so that happened in August 1978. Uh, thank you, Mr. Civil Party, for answering the questions. My colleague has a few questions about uh, Regiment uh, 112. Thank you. Prosecutor, good morning, Mr. President, Your Honours. My name is Seng Ling. I'm the National Deputy Co-Prosecutor and Mr. Civil Party. I have some questions uh, to put to you. First, I'd like you to uh, speak about the special unit. Can you tell the Chamber how many members were in the, that unit and who was in charge? Answer. The special unit in Regiment uh, 112, there were members of a, 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 a company, and each company had uh, three platoons, and there were about 30 soldiers in each platoon, so you can do your calculation question. So can you uh, tell the chamber in which platoon or company you were attached to? President Civil Party, please observe the microphone. Answer. There were three uh, platoons uh, under that one company. Question, and in which platoon you were in? President the Civil Party, again, please observe the microphone. Answer. In the special unit of Regiment 112, we had uh, Hu as uh, our commander. Who was the who was in charge of the special unit? Question: What was uh, the full name of Hu, and any alias for him? Answer: I do not recall uh, his full name or his alias. I only recall him uh, by Hu. And there was also another person. It was a woman who was the uh, deputy, who was the chief, and woman was the deputy. Question: Do you know the full name of woman or his alias or code name? President Civil Party, please observe the microphone. 
answer. I only know uh, that name and not the full name. Who and Vuen were in charge of our reconnaissance uh, group. And they also provided uh, the training to me, that is how to lay uh, mines. And uh, from his appearance, he was uh, uh, of Chinese background. He personally uh, trained us in uh, Unit 112, that is how to lay uh, mines. And that was his uh, expertise. Question, in the interest of time, I'd like to uh, refer to list of actually one prisoner that is dated 31st March 2016. And the list uh, have some information concerning four important persons who were sent from Regiment 112 in particular from the reconnaissance uh, unit of uh, Regiment 112. The first person on uh, the list, and allow me to read it, uh, the full details of the four individuals, and then I will put some question to you. You made mention of two people, that is Hu and Wuen, President interrupts. Deputy Co-Prosecutor, please provide relevant EN numbers of the document. First, the document named, and then the relevant EN numbers. And I'd like now to hand the floor to Council for uh, Kiev Sampo. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, indeed, uh, my objection was geared to, to obtain the exact references, and we heard in the French translation that it was an S-21 list from 31 March 2016. So I don't know if the co-prosecutor is referring to the list from the OCIJ or if there was a mistake uh, with the date. So if you could please clarify. Some Deputy co-prosecutor. It is a list of s prisoner uh, of the Office of the Co-Prosecutor of Co-Investigating Judges date, dated 31st March 2016. And on the list, uh, there are segments of information concerning the four individuals that I just mentioned. They were uh, members of the reconnaissance uh, group from Regiment 112. And the first person that I would like to uh, read in order to refresh the memory of civil party is Jin Gum Hu, alias Woon. And uh, it is at uh, number 9190 of the prisoner's list. And this information in 1978 stated that he was 24 years old in that year. And he was a uh, chief of a uh, reconnaissance platoon of Regiment 112 in Sector 23. He was detained in the East Zone, that is in Sector 23, and was sent to S21 office on 6 April 1978. Subsequently, he was executed on the 27th May 1978. My uh, question to you, a uh, civil party, is that do you know this person, uh, Chen Kum Hu, whose alias was Woon? Answer. That is the uh, person named Hu that I refer to, although I only know him as Hu. He was an expert in providing uh, military training to us. He uh, had a uh, light complexion, but I do not know his uh, alias or full name, although people refer to him as a uh, comrade Hu. 
and in Batman 112 there was only one person named Hu who led the special force unit question thank you please uh, limit your response since I'm running out of time To your knowledge, the person uh, named Hu that you knew, what was his uh, position in Regiment 112? Answer. He was a military technical instructor in uh, laying mines and he provided us with uh, the military training question. Also, through your knowledge, was he arrested or sent for training? Answer. During the regime, there was no uh, arrest. In fact, we were allowed to go for to attend study uh, train or study session or training sessions, and then we were arrested. Question: Did you ever see him again after 1978? And do you know if he is still alive? Answer. Mr. President, no, I have not uh, seen him since uh, 1978 or 79. That is, since he was called to attend the study sessions. Question, Mr. President, uh, may I seek additional 10 more minutes since we lost about uh, 10 minutes this morning? Now we move on. To to the second uh, person, Bumsu alias Win, and on the prisoner list, his uh, his serial number is uh, 9255, and it states that in 1978 he was 23 years old. He was a deputy. Deputy Chief of a Reconnaissance Company in Regiment 112 in Sector 23. He was arrested in the East Zone and sent to Attorney 1 on 7 April 1978 and was subsequently executed on 11 May 1978. The civil party, do you know this person? From Sue Elias Wynn? Answer. No, the name does not ring a bell. I usually know people by their facial uh, expressions. Question, that is all right. Now we move on to another uh, prisoner, that is Chan Savun. Chan Savun, rather. Elis Chan Dam. Elis Vun. In the prisoner list, his serial number is 94. 50. He was 23 years old, who was a, a group chief of a reconnaissance unit in Regiment 112, who was detained and sent to S21 on 12 April 1978 and executed on 29 April 1978. Do you know this person? Chan Sarun or Chan Dam Elias Brun. President Civil Party, please observe the microphone. Answer. Uh, Sarun used to work in the uh, reconnaissance unit with me, although I did not know his native village. As for his Elias Dam, uh, I'm not familiar with it. In fact, Sarun was a group chief. Question. And from your uh, knowledge, was he arrested or sent for re education or study session and disappeared during the regime? Answer. Mr. President, uh, we were allowed uh, to go to attend study sessions and arrested. They never went to arrest us at the front battlefield. 
how could they go to the front of the field and arrest us because we were all armed. So then they uh, used a pretext of sending us to attend study sessions and then uh, arrested us. Question. Does it mean that uh, Severn was sent for study session? Can you clarify that? Answer. I never heard that they came to arrest people. I only heard of cases where they came to tell us to go to attend study sessions. Question. I have another question to related to this person. From 1978, have you ever seen him again or have any information regarding his uh, survival? Answer, no, I have not met him again. If I uh, meet him, then I would recognize him. Question, now I move on to the last person on the list, Siu Tung. The serial number on the prisoner list is ten thousand fourteen thousand nine hundred and fourteen and he was twenty eight years old and he was a combatant in, in unit fifteen. However, formerly he was in the recognition unit of Platoon 68 in Regiment 112 and later on was promoted to a group chief in Division 703 in 78. He was detained at S21 the core office and sent to S21 in 78. And my question to you is, uh, do you know if you know this person? Answer, no, I do not know this person. Question, that is all right. In the interest of time, I would like to conclude my uh, question now. Thank you, Mr. President. President, uh, thank you. It is now convenient for our lunch break. We take a break now and resume at 1.30 this afternoon to continue our proceedings. Court officer, please assist the civil party at the waiting room reserved for civil parties and witnesses during the lunch break and invite him back into the courtroom at 1.30. Security personnel to instruct him to take Kiel some pawn to the waiting room downstairs and have him returned to attend the proceedings this afternoon before 1.30. The court is now in recess. <laughs>